That's not good for that job. What the flap? As I said, Twist of Fate was really part of uh, like a two-part DVD, and the second part is this one here, uh, Rain and Grain. And this DVD stands out to me for so many different things I could talk about in this DVD. We had started something with Twist of Fate. We had really seen something. We had seen, I don't know, in my opinion, almost a movement that just the, the support, the overwhelming support for what we were trying to do. I mean, how many people had done something like that before? Let's be realistic. We, we wanted to give a tractor up to the world that could really let people see that we were serious and, and, and we were going to do this, and, and that's exactly what we did. The figure was in excess of 150,000 euro. How they were beat down. Strong machinery. And then you're happy with them, and when you're happy, we're happy. There are so many times I have seen one specific video clip where I'm asking Gary how do I make it better and he nods at the TW35 and a lot of people will obviously think oh this is like Hollywood here it's all set up but that was not set up. <laughs> that was the moment, the bombshell, the, the realisation we're going to do this to the TW35. Not many people expected us to, to do it to the TW35 but as a statement from Grassman that life, kids, everything is so much more important than any physical thing that you may or may not own. And the TW35 was questionably the most popular tractor we ever had. So we rolled out the ball to see what would, what would happen. We started talking to what we called our influencers, the people that we loved, the people that we 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 were close with so the first conversation was most definitely Michael Hoy and and um, Charles because this was a Ford Charles was New Holland we were a bit concerned that we had just done a New Holland how would bringing a Ford into it work but the movement of what we were trying to do with and for charities had just taken off Michael 
ask for the tractor to be sent down to Armstrong's. Armstrong's gave it a good old look through. A few bits and bobs were added to the tractor and I went to gather up the tractor and I was told my money was no use. So, you know, there was there was a force behind us. They realised what we were trying to do and there was people out there that wanted to help. There were people coming left, right, centre, helping us. And we managed to turn that TW35 from the relative dog that she was to a thing of absolute beauty. Not every Ford enthusiast loves it with the black grill and the, the, but we didn't change the appearance. We weren't doing that. We put the straight pipe on it. Why? Because we couldn't, it was ours. We'd do what we want. we make whatever noise out of that tractor we wanted. But she was mechanically as sound as we could make it. And that was the absolute dream. We got approached by a group called the Active Agri Society and in the background they had talked to us about this bale challenge they were planning for 32 counties of Ireland where we were going to bale 100 bales in every county over six days. Yeah, 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 that's what I thought. And then I realised they were serious. Well, there was no way the TW was going to manage all these counties on her own, that's what we thought. So, New Holland, Michael Hoy, Charles, myself, had a harebrained idea. Well, we need a tractor to take it around everywhere. New Holland said, well, since you did so well with the fate and you're doing this, we would like to get involved. That was the birth of the very famous Grassman 315. Then the 230 came along because they said that the 315 wasn't really the tractor to put up against the TW, it was unfair. So next thing New Holland offered a 230, but on one condition, we give it a twist. We decided on the T7315 HD, or jointly decided i think you kind of had your heart set amongst it based on what you had done with country crest and you're a man of the world you had been around and seen them work um, and we like the idea of the tw the 11090 worked fabulously well the tw was something that was uh, going to build on that and it came to us when we were talking about the hd or the t7315 that there was an opportunity to bring a modern tw to the front of the the, the, the customer's eye as well and, and the, your viewers and, and something for you guys to work with. So the T7 230 is rated at about 185 horsepower, which ironically your TW back in the day when it was fresh would have been around 186. That is correct. So we made it a modern TW 230, we called it. We painted it with the old Ford paint and put the white roof on it. A little bit ironic that um, <coughs> it's now an optional extra, but we'll not get into that. <laughs> Just saying, we did it first. But the first thing we did in this DVD was we wanted to show the 32 County Bale Challenge, which was not for Mega Wish. I must point this out very clearly. We did not do that challenge to raise money to sell tickets for the TW35. We actually refused. We sold no tickets that week. We were there to support the Active Agri Association in their personal efforts for the Ronald McDonald House in Dublin and for the Cancer Fund for Children. That's exactly what the ambition was there. So 
are raffling the TW35 for something that all our work would have to come outside of that, but I just didn't feel it was right. Um, so we knew we had a great lineup of tractors and we had 315 to take the, the TW around for a bit of fun. In the six days, I think the 315, which was just new, travelled in the region of, was it 11? Was it 1130 something miles? It was a big tractor, with a 30 something foot long, low loader. Mad in the head I was, mad in the head, but we got it done. We raised 60 grand euros, by the way, that week, and that was something to be so proud of. And we bailed bales in every county, which we set out to do. That DVD then took us to a guy that we had gotten to know through the fact that we now, in our own personal fleet, had bought a 7810 John Deere and replaced our 7710 John Deere. And I didn't need the two of them, so I, I was in the notion of selling one. Gary met Alec Wilkinson at a John Deere event to celebrate 50 years of John Deere in the UK and Ireland, and Gary met Alec there, and Alec was in the position to buy an extra 10 series tractor at that time. Little did we know Alec Wilkinson was just who he was. Little did we know how close we, as a business, would become with Alec and uh, his family over the, the, the coming years. We then asked Alec, based on his business of contract farming, would we be able to bring the TW back to him because he started out with Fords and TWs. Well, Alec, you're the hardcore John Deere man through and through. We got you onto the TW last night. You're probably the first real outfit we've been to that we've, we've dirtied it. What's your thoughts? Describe getting back onto the seat of the PW. And tell me, could you physically drive it? <laughs> well, that was a, a real drag back from the past. I was just working out when we were, when I was on there. That'll be 18 years since, since I drove a TW. And uh, felt like putting on an old pair of slippers. Uh, watching it unloading next to us on the combines was good, but getting, getting a load on and giving her the gun was just yeah, that was a, a real spot of nostalgia for me. Going to work with Alec was absolutely phenomenal. And I mean, some of the footage we, we, we captured from that visit, in my opinion, with the combines work, and it was just phenomenal. Your eyes, your ears, your tongue, your lips, the pattern on your fingertips, they all say this is me. There's no other boy or girl, no one in this whole world like us. Where you need millions gone.
one still to come, but there will only be the one with your special mystique. Just tell anyone who asks, you're unique, you're unique. There will never then came the messing about at the barn, which was just the most horrendous year ever that I can remember for weather. We came home from Alex, everything was wet. We had this 315. We were struggling to get out to get her working with these set of B1000 mowers. And when we got working with those mowers, I was blown away by the quality. We had spoke to Michael Hoy Michael had lent us his 1905 Harvester. New Holland had then lent us their 650 forage cruiser. And you have to understand at this stage, New Holland had given us these two tractors. They were providing phenomenal support for charity and we wanted to, to move things forward. So we decided to look at 30 years then and now. So with the 1905, which was 30 years old, the new 650 forage cruiser, and then we did the same with the tractors. We got a newer Massey, an older Massey. We got a new Dutz, an old Dutz. We got Michael Hoy's 7810 Series 3, two-wheel drive, oh my word. And then we had it against the 230. We had the 315 stepped up to the butt rake. And uh, I think to this day, Gary, no matter what color is, would tell you that that was the best machine for dozing a load of grass he has ever worked with. 315's been uh, pretty awesome now on the buck rake. Serious ability to move stuff now. Seems a good grape too. Good visibility through it. Seems strong now. There's no issue with the 315 moving stuff now. She's she's a 300 horse. It's 10 ton on her own. And there's a 1800 kilo block in the back of her. So that buck rake I would say is a ton and a half. You have 13 plus tons there at your disposal on Axio Bab tires. There's no reason why she shouldn't be able to, to move grass there. There's two choppers coming at us and it's they're still moving a lot of stuff. Loving this tractor now, I must say. Everything was just right about that tractor, but then that tractor is a special tractor. It's a special tractor in here and will always be a special tractor in here simply because of the wee fella that we named it after, uh, Young Bailey and anyone who knows anything about the story of, of young Billy Morrow will understand that that tractor means so much, so much to everyone at Grassman who works around it. And it means an awful lot to me personally and an awful lot to uh, the family of little Billy. So it's a very, very special machine. And New Holland had been such a strong part of the support in this whole mechanism that we said, right, it's time to try an FR. We had Barry Reid lined up to drive the FR, but with the weather being so horrendous, it just wasn't to be. And literally, on that morning, it was like, oh no, I'm going to have to drive this. They have got me on to an FR for the first time ever. <sighs> Not just there yet. Bit of learning to do. I really had to learn <laughs> an FR in one day. We had one day's grass to cut and that was it. But we got there and I think from the start of the day, we started out quite nervous with the legs spread. And then as I always say to my film crew, when you see me sitting with the legs crossed, you know I'm comfortable and I'm happy. And they have actually learned that and they see me sitting in the cab with the legs crossed, they're like, he's happy, he's on it, he's doing it the way he and everyone's working.
And then I suppose the one final little bit of good news to come out of that DVD was the little dudes, the 451. The 451 came and it brought back every memory from a young fella. And the Massey that we had there as well, I must point out, was actually a, a, an uncle's of mine. He's, he's passed away now, but he was literally a hero to us. My cousin had taken it and restored it and parked it in the shade and we managed to bring it out. The 451 Dutch was really a replica of a tractor that other uncles of mine had at the time. And it brought back so many memories. A lot of people growing up always remember the tractors that they spent time beside their daddy or their uncles or whoever in with. And for a lot of people I know, like your Ford 7610s and 7810s are the popular ones in your masses, but for, for me and my family circle, it, it was Dutz and the Massey. And I loved it so much, and the sentiment was there because it was exactly the same tractor that I first had assailed with my daddy in as a little nipper. I bought it. It didn't go home. It stayed. And um, it was very, very lovingly known as my wee boy's Dutz. Duncan's Dutz. <laughs> it's his tractor, basically. and So it's all part of the brand and how the brand has, has went and how there's so many personal touches within it and how we've kept it going. And then we raffled the TW and Bailey's mummy pulled the tickets. That's how close and how important this was for the Grassmen family. So the Grassmen has really grown as a big, wide family. And you'll see, if you look at the cover, you'll see exactly what I mean. There's the big man that I am sitting in there with my legs crossed. So I was loving life at that particular moment in time. The quote on this one, and I stand by this, if we could all leave the world a better place than we found it, we'd be going places. <laughs> How true is that? So that tractor was raffled, 120,000 it made. The two tractors combined was a quarter of a million for Make-A-Wish. Not too bad for an eight-year-old at that stage. A seven-year-old or eight-year-old company. I think we were doing really, really well with a great team of young people who worked hard. There was nights with very little sleep in the run-up to that. And anyone that works here, I think, holds their head up high and are proud that... that that we managed to do this. And because the weather was so horrendous, rain and green, we introduced a bit more green. And here in Ireland, we had nothing but rain. <laughs> so that was rain and green. Boy, that TW looks good there, doesn't it? I'm still glad it's gone though, but we'll not get into that. <laughs> I say goodbye to another night. The countdown's running slow. We're coming up the best of times But with nowhere to go No bright lights for the future Only frozen rain A trying to ignite a revolution Something's never gonna change A darling to get the best of us A fight for what you know A left the world Chasing the future, let's go.